In this lecture, I'll give you an overview of the KiCad Project Manager, which is the main KiCad window that you're looking at here. This is the window that you'll first see when you start KiCad. The Project Manager gives you access to the various KiCad applications, such as the Schematic Editor, the Symbol Editor, and the PCB Editor. It also shows you the project files, as you can see in this example here. This is uh, one of the projects in this course. To open up a KiCad project, once you have KiCad open, you can go to File and then use the Open Project option. Then navigate to your project directory and pick up and double click on the file with the underscore pro extension. Another way to do that is to either drag and drop this same file into KiCad main window or double click on it. So I'll show you, for example, I'm going to close this project and then reopen it by using the drag and drop option. Whichever way you choose, eventually you've got your project loaded into KiCad. Just a short interruption to let you know that this video is part of my comprehensive KiCad course that will teach you every aspect of creating printed circuit boards with KiCad from scratch. Go to the course page to learn more about it if you want. Find the link to the course page in the description below and treat yourself with a discount coupon for my YouTube viewers. Okay, let's continue with the video. Now let's have a look at the user interface in the main KiCad window. On the left side, you've got a toolbar that gives you access to options that are also accessible from other parts of the application. So for example, this first button on the left toolbar allows you to create a new project, which is also accessible from the file menu. Similarly, you can open up a project with a second button, which you can also do from the file menu. And you've got a couple of buttons that allow you to archive and unarchive projects. More detail about all this later. This button allows you to refresh whatever you're seeing, just in case um, information here becomes stale. For example, you might create a new directory for um, libraries, for example, as you can see here in your project folder. And if it doesn't appear immediately in the KiCad main window and the project files, you can just refresh the project and that will pick it up. And down the bottom here, you've got the ability to bring up the project folder in a new window. So you can actually directly access the files. In the left pane on the right side of the toolbar, there is the project files. And here you can see all of the files and directories of your project. So I'm just going to put those side by side. And you can see, for example, I've got a custom library directory. I decided to just create this directory and save all the various library files that I'm using in this particular project. And you can see that it also appears right here so you can see it uh, from the KiCad environment. And then on the right side, on the main area of the window, you've got buttons that take you to the KiCad applications. These applications can also be started via the tools menu up here. So you've got the schematic editor, symbol editor, PCB editor, footprint editor, the Gerber viewer, image converter, calculator tools, drawing sheet editor, and the plugin and content manager. And for all of these, I've got dedicated lectures where I'll show you all the details. So you, you don't need to worry about those right now. So let's focus now on the menu items up the top. And the first one to look at is the main keycard. Uh, drop down. This is where you can get information about the current KiCad version that you're using. There's lots of information about uh, the team that's behind all this. Uh, there's very important buttons up here that allow you to do things such as copy comprehensive information about the version of KiCad that you're using. You can paste it in a text editor and this is the, what the information looks like. So this is the version of uh, KiCad that I'm currently using. And this is useful if you want to report a bug. There's another button here, report bug. If you click on that button, it will open up your browser and it will take you to uh, this page on GitLab. This is a KiCad repository. And in here you can create a new issue by clicking on the blue button. There's comprehensive instructions. It's important before you submit a bug report to read these instructions and there's also more information and, and even an example that's annotated on the 
Kickout website, you can access this page by clicking on this button or this link right here. So this link will take you to the bug report information or instructions page. Since this is open source free software, it's important for anyone who is using Kikad to, well, at least uh, participate in the development and improvement over time by uh, reporting any behavior that is not normal or outright bugs, uh, things that just break uh, to the Kikad team. Because um, although some bugs are common between people uh, and uh, like obviously reported there are some edge type of bugs that may might be present only in some environments with some configurations that might be rare among the installed kickout instances and your bug a bug that you have noticed may be one of those rare bug instances so it's it's important just to take a little bit of time to report it and uh, help improve the overall quality of the software so that's where you can do that i'll just put this away for now uh hit okay another thing that you'll find under the kickout menu is settings so this is the preferences window and as you can see it allows you to configure all of the individual applications in the Kickout suite of applications. So you can see Symbol Editor, Schematic Editor, Footprint, PCB, 3D Viewer, Gerber Viewer, and the Drawing Sheet Editor. In the past, before Kickout 7, if I remember correctly, all of these items used to be accessible only within the preferences window of their individual applications and you wouldn't be able to find them all together in one place so this has changed much better from a usability point of view so all of the preferences for all of the individual kicker applications are now put together in one place so there's the common settings these apply to all individual applications and then you've got the individual settings again i'm going to go through all of them later on as we talk about the individual applications so i'll explain what all of these settings are and what they do okay let's continue uh, you already know what's under file it's the same items that you'll find here uh, the archive and unarchive project options allow you to bundle your project in a zip file so then you can share it with other people. And I've got a recipe towards the end of this course to explain how this works. You can also import projects from other CAD applications. CADSTAR, Eagle, and Easy EDA are supported. I've got a lecture on how to use those as well. Let's continue with uh, edit, the usual stuff, cut, copy, paste, and autofill. Uh, this also depends on your operating system. And then have a look at the view. So in the view, you find the refresh and browse project files, which I showed you earlier, but there's also the text editor. So the nice thing about KeyCard, as I mentioned in a previous lecture, is that everything is a text file. So for example, have a look at the schematic file. If you right click on it, it allows you to edit this file in a text editor. So it will bring up the contents of this file and you can Look at them, you can make changes just manually. For example, you can change the size here to 1.0. I'm not gonna save that of course, but this is an editable file. And any change that you make and you save has an effect in the application. So close and go under tools. You've got access to the buttons that are also available to interact directly in the main KiCad window. This gives you access to the various programs. So for example, if I bring up the Gerber Viewer, it looks like this. And I do think that I've got Gerbers somewhere here. There they are. I can select either each one of those files individually and bring them into the Gerber Viewer to have a look at. So that was the back copper layer. Let's go for the front copper layer. That's what it looks like. You can also do multiple files at the same time. So I'm just going to copy all of those or select all of those and select uh, those that I don't want to display and then drag them onto the Gerber viewer and uh, have a look at what the files that are sent to the manufacturer look like. So this is just one of the final steps for quality insurance. So you can open up the 
Gerber Viewer or any of the other programs either by directly clicking on its icon in the main keycard window or via the tools menu. Under preferences, we can do things such as configure the paths. So this is a list of paths that KiCad uses to locate things such as 3D models, footprints, symbols, and templates. So you can see here I've copied these directories to an external disk on my computer uh, because of how much space they occupy. It's uh, several gigabytes, especially for the 3D models. So I wanted to preserve internal disk space and decided to place those items externally. It does make KiCad overall a little bit slower, but typically it's a bit slow only when you start KiCad for the first time as it goes into those directories and reads the files there. After that, uh, speed is not affected, but it does help uh, reduce the amount of space needed on the internal disk. So you can set all that here. Another example of things that you can do under preferences is to manage libraries. So in this case, I've got the symbol library window, and this is a list of all the symbol libraries that Kik has, has access to. Most of those, you can see those with uh, this variable, kikat8 underscore symbol DIR directory. This came with KiCad, but I've got some additional libraries that I installed separately, and I'm going to show you how to do that. And you can find such libraries on the internet. Um, you can just Google for things such as KiCad library for XYZ component, and you find a lot of uh, options. So this one is one from SparkFun. I installed it as part of my libraries for the book. And you can see other libraries here as well. Same thing happens with the footprints as a footprint library manager. It works the same way as the schematic. You've got the built-in libraries and third-party ones that are installed separately. And just like with the schematic, you can have global libraries and then project-specific libraries that only apply in the current project. And I'll show you how to set up libraries in a dedicated lecture. Finally, under help, you have access to things such as a uh, user's manual that is local. In most likely, when you installed KiCad, it came with uh, local documentation. So you can access the documentation via help and then help, and it will bring up this file. So uh, the documentation has improved a lot over the years. So it's getting pretty high quality content there. Uh, there's also getting started with KiCad information that will bring up another local HTML file, which helps you get started, which is what you're doing right now, actually. A list of hotkeys I'm going to talk about later, and then another um, donate button and a report bug, which will take you to this page right here. Okay, so this was a quick overview of the main KiCad window. Uh, which is called usually the KiCad Project Manager. Let's have a look at the next few lectures now where I will explore in more detail each of the applications in the KiCad suite of applications.